Hey guys, welcome back. It is Unpopular Opinions in Pokemon time. It's been a little while since we've done one of these. Been a little bit busy recently uh, with some some things, as you might have seen. But uh, we're going to get right back into it. Back onto E4, back onto the forum. Again, Sakari, always in the description. He's the creator of this thread. He's also on YouTube. If you want to go check that out, uh, it will be available down below. So starting off here, we have King Boo 64 who says Eevee Heroes is a pretty boring set. Um, I would disagree, uh, and I'm not even that big of an Eevee Lucian fan, but I feel like the people that really love Eevee and uh, all the evolutions would uh, maybe have your head for this one here. So be careful, King Boo. Uh, there are a lot of Eevee fans. There's been so many Eevees recently. I'm pretty sure every promo card... Uh, in every blister is, you know, there's like a 9 out of 10 chance of it being an evolution uh, in these recent products. I know Saber feels feels the pain on that because uh, she collects one of each, so that's an absolute, absolute nightmare to, to keep one of each of those sealed and also want to have an individual copy of those promos for your binder. So next up, Papa Frank God, who was going ham on this thread, so we're going to see a lot of him in this episode. Um, this first one this seems seems like a little bit of a troll comment more than an unpopular opinion, but uh, we'll read it anyway. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Market is crashing. 99.9% .9 of people in the hobby are not true collectors. NFT is the future. MetaZoo will surpass Pokemon by 2023. I would agree that there's a lot of people that aren't really collectors or aren't long-term invested or interested in, in Pokemon. And uh, that's sort of always the case. Uh, most people that get into Pokemon, even if it's not during this hype, after about a year, uh, their interest fades uh, and they move on to other things. Or after they accomplish something that they grew up with, then they don't move on to sort of the next thing. They'll uh, they'll just do that and kind of be done with it. Uh, and maybe they come back in the future, maybe not. Hard to say. Uh, NFTs, not a fan. Um, I just not a, We're not going to get into that. Uh, MetaZoo, also not a fan, uh, but the thing with MetaZoo, uh, it's, it's not going to surpass Pokemon. I'm sorry for anyone that thinks that. I don't know if Papa Frank God actually does or not. I have a feeling he doesn't, and this is just a, a meme, but um, nothing against MetaZoo if you're collecting it for the, the means of you, you just like the cards, or you like the product, and you enjoy it, but from what I've seen, there's a lot of people that are into it for financial reasons more so than they are the actual product and um, I think those people are probably in for a bad time uh, just the whole thing felt a little bit too forced as in like a oh you missed out on Pokemon look at the prices now here's MetaZoo this is going to do the same thing so I don't know Pokemon clone 25 years too late maybe but again just my opinion if you like the cards I have some other side collections that aren't Pokemon and uh, the value on those is basically nothing. So, um, Metabots, I love it. Not worth very much money. But, personally, that's just something I love collecting. I don't expect it to be worth any amount of money in the future. This doesn't matter anyway, because I, I wouldn't sell it. So, here we go. We have Papa Frank God again, who says, Collecting Modern is not cool. Uh, I kind of agree. It depends who you're talking to. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, Modern sucks. But, you know, everything was modern at one point in time. And also in terms of if you're opening um, and stuff like that, Modern is probably the place to do that. Not to mention just artwork on Modern. Sorry to say it to anyone uh, that disagrees here, but Modern artwork is better than it's ever been. Uh, it's a lot of the same artists anyway, but uh, the variety and just the insane artworks that are that are constantly coming out, way better than the the older stuff, which... There wasn't really an emphasis put on the older stuff, like the Wazi stuff, that doesn't really even have a background. I don't know. Not not as good to me, in my opinion. But, you know, there's nostalgia there that, that makes it good. But if you compare old work, even from the same artist, it doesn't come anywhere close. They put way more effort uh, into the artwork now than they ever have. Rip Guy Fox says, although the recent Pokemon market has had its problems with scalpers and irrational flippers, it's still relatively ethical in the big picture. I recently took a look at the cryptocurrency market 
and the amount of scammers, clueless, mischievous YouTubers and hype it, people is unbearable. Uh, yeah, so I feel like that's that's pretty much spot on. The thing with this, all this like scalping, flipping, whatever, it was a temporary issue and it was more, it was the fear of missing out by people that emphasized the scalper problem to be more of a problem than it actually was. Um, with these modern sets that were in standard, there was no way, and even Pokemon themselves said they were going to print more. They did print more. And when the money isn't there, when the market cools off, the scalpers aren't going to be there. Because if they can't instantly flip it uh, for big money or for some kind of gains off the shelf, into the cart, into your hands, they're not going to do it. So the worst thing you can do is, you know, panic and, and buy something early at a, at a markup from a scalper because that's just incentivizing the scalpers. Most of them want to get rid of the stuff right away. So if you're just patient, Pokemon will put more out. And they'll either be stuck with it or they'll be forced to sell it at, uh, you know, store prices or less if, if the store is stocked with something uh, and they absolutely need to get the money back out of it. They're going to have to sell it at a loss, which is, you know what, if you want to get back at them, that's probably the way to do it. They're not going to be an issue anyway uh, once everything cools off here. Uh, it's already started to. There's so much product available at the moment. Uh, and somebody, I know someone in the comments is going to say, Oh, but my Walmart, it doesn't have anything. Yeah, well, some game store or something near you must. If not, there's lots online. Maybe there isn't one specific product available at all times, but for the most part, you can get cards right now uh, without without issues. So be patient, and if you were patient, you were rewarded. If you don't care about the money and you wanted to spend some extra just to have the stuff on release... Go for it, but just know that you're spending extra money. Papa Frank God says, Set cards belong in a binder. Change my mind. Spoiler, can't be changed. Uh, I would agree, but I don't think they have to be. If you really want to put them in uh, an expensive piece of plastic with a number 1 through 10 on it, go to town. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Sets, set cards together. I love set cards that are... Uh, pressed up against one of another in a binder format. It just feels feels right. Feels Maybe it's just like the completionist in me, but I, I love when the whole set is next to each other, or at least most of the set and most of my sets, um, where you can fill in the blanks. It's, it's just like a, a really satisfying puzzle and cool to see like the overall theme or what was going on in that particular era of the uh, TCG. So... That's my preference. I wouldn't have it any other way. Snowbell City says all Kalongs, be all cards belong unsleeved, bound together by a rubber band stored in your jorts pocket. Uh, you know what? That's not too far off in the uh, the nineties, late nineties, early two thousands, uh, when the uh, cards really didn't have too much of a value other than the fact that kids wanted to bring them to school, trade each other, all that fun stuff. Uh, I think you might have to also add in here that they can be laminated, if anything. Uh, if it goes through the washer and dryer, uh, then your your parents can laminate it uh, to, to maintain its integrity as one piece. Troy says, I'll be the opposite and say that I think Eevee Heroes is a strong contender for greatest set of all time. Even though it's early, at least deserves a seat at the table as Neo Rev, the whole E-series, Unseen Forces, Rocket Returns, Hidden Fates, etc., the quality of art from top to bottom is unreal, and the fact that it revolves around Eevee, a strong set concept that definitely should have been done sooner, is just incredible. Modern Pokemon ha was completely dead in 17 to 18, and the beginning of Alt Arts in 19 was leading up to this exact set. I just wonder how they'll keep, how they're going to top it. So. Yeah, I don't know. There's always, like, the new chase, the new gimmick and whatever. And um, it is definitely getting over the top. I think they need to drop some of the gimmicks that they have kind of left over. I've said this a million times with the rainbow rares and stuff like that. Uh, they just don't need them anymore. And it could have been, like, a a one and done with, like, sun and moon. Something something along those lines. But there's going to be there's gonna be something on top of the alt arts to come. It'll be the next chase thing. At some point, people will kind of forget or get bored of alt arts, and not necessarily totally bored of them, but they will 
you know, they'll drop off when they're not the new cool thing, uh, just like secret rares before or hyper rares before. Same idea. Muck says, I don't understand why anyone even remotely cares about legendary collection beyond the reverse hollows. Any other regular hollow or non hollow is just a worse version of the original, and it's not even the first reprint set. So, yeah, I personally, I would rather see new cards than reprints. This was a reprint kind of scenario. A lot of that Wizards of the Coast era reprint stuff was more along the lines of making the cards accessible to players which i understand and I, I think promos do a good job of that now rather than reprinting actual sets especially with the same artwork i know there are some like slight differences in the uh, legendary collection like hollows and whatever not hollow to hollow but yeah and then the reverses i don't know what they were doing there maybe they were trying to experiment a little bit and um and maybe it was a good thing if you like reverses now uh, maybe those reverses were the, the gateway or test, the little trial run into uh, future sets containing them. Niche says, unpopular opinion. I don't view errors as part of a complete set, and I don't really care to collect them. I would say some errors would be part of a complete set, like I, like something like a Red, red Cheeks Pikachu. Um, to have both of those, I would think that would make the complete set. If it's something like ink dots and and whatever and miss cuts no definitely not uh, but if it's something that's repeated or something that was corrected i think it's nice to have both versions um, and i don't I, I wouldn't collect anything outside of that it's just not my not my thing uh, so i think yeah i think here we go we got glossy non-glossy uh 100 collections yeah i think that's sums it up pretty well uh, if it's a mistake that was made, especially if it's one that was corrected, I think it's nice to have both. That or like stamp variations or promos and stuff like that. Kind of cool. Quachancy says, The past year has made me wary of price tracking threads. They're useful, and I don't mean wary, in wary of them as a resource. I try to contribute when I have data. But lately, when I see a new price tracker thread for a class of cards like Play Promos, Delivery, Pikachu, I interpret it as, if the market is fluctuating and unpredictable enough that constant updates are required for these items, for buyers and sellers to be comfortable, they are not a good purchase until the price stabilizes. So I would completely agree with this. Um, there was a point in time where I knew a lot of the prices just off the top of my head or I could get very close. But with this recent influx and boom, and now with the retracing uh, that's going on on a lot of it, I've I've just given up on trying to keep that knowledge or that like price knowledge handy, or even try to guess on anything. You pretty much have to look it up at the time, and that doesn't really work with these play promos and and stuff like that that are a little bit harder to come by. But in terms of like set cards, uh, which is my wheelhouse. Um, yeah, I pretty much had to look them up at the time. And I've avoided a lot of the older stuff uh, that did spike really hard in price. I don't think it'll ever go back down to exactly where it was um, before the boom, but I do. And, well, I, get, I did and do think that uh, stuff will retrace to kind of go back to a more uh, natural or normal growth. And um, so modern for the time being, and modern was a mess too, so... Uh, that's kind of why I've focused on modern a little bit more. Um, the old stuff uh, in hopes of it coming down in price and then I can get back onto the, the cards that I'm missing from there. I do have a large chunk of the, 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 the older sets, so um, it's not a big deal to go back. And eh, there's a risk involved with anything. Um, I mean, nothing can go to the moon forever, but at the same time, I could be spending more than I would be if I picked them up earlier on. So, Amwolf says anyone who makes content seriously flexing their collection aren't collectors um, I mean if you're exclusively just like showing off all the like price tags and stuff that you have then maybe but I think a lot of the time um, it's nice to show what you have uh, I made binder videos uh, which were a lot of fun and cool to catalog what I had back then 
uh, and then to look back on that eventually and you know see what kind of progress I made would be super cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if you're, if you're just constantly flexing what you're buying, selling, whatever. Yeah, you're, you're probably not a collector. But to each their own. Tat Rob, I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce that, but uh, that's how I'm going to. Togepi is the best Pokemon ever made. I, I, how many people have put something in this thread where they're just saying what their favorite Pokemon is, basically? And then it's a dead giveaway because caught you red-handed here with your Togepi profile picture. Unacceptable. Seafoam Articuno says, The price per pack in ETBs is almost always higher than loose packs, and sometimes even booster boxes, because ETBs display well? Question mark. I don't understand why. My opinion, if I had to rank how nicely different Pokemon boxes display, vintage theme deck boxes, booster boxes, tins, toss-up, depending on artwork, over ETBs. So I would say that the price of ETBs is largely due to the fact that the contents in it are not made in the same location. So all your dice and your coins um, and your sleeves and stuff like that are made in China, where the cards and everything else... I don't know about the tins. The tins might be also made in China and brought in. But a lot of the components in the ETB had to be shipped in from somewhere else. And I think that's why we saw uh, a delay in getting more Hidden Fates ETBs was just because they couldn't get the, the components for the contents of, of the ETB itself, uh, more so than the other. Uh, all, they're great storage boxes for cards, for like my extra bulk and uh, if I have the spares that I'm going to trade eventually awesome but yeah uh, in terms of price usually not the best option but uh, that's probably why it's just the the components that have to come from the other locations uh, and probably the cost involved gag 89 says i don't really like the galarian birds trio i much prefer the original three um i think i prefer the original three as well and they're never going to like really live up to the nostalgia and the reputation of the original three uh, but I think it is cool that they did, like, the trio together. I like when uh, Pokemon are either paired, like the Latios and Latias, um, or even, like, the, the trios, the whether it be the birds or the dogs or whatever. Uh, I don't know why, but I like that, like, kind of grouping thing where they have something in common, especially when they're all in the same set. I, they Pokemon just likes to trigger me by they'll put, like, two of the birds in one set and then one in the next or something like that. Um, especially with the legendary dogs. I've seen that, uh, I think, a few times in recent years where they, where they split them up. All right, Lavender Gengar. The people thinking that MetaZoo has any chance of dethroning Pokemon or any of the other two of the big three are completely delusional and are that kind of people who don't understand how demand works. MetaZoo has zero things backing up. Looks like those cheap knockoffs from Pokemon from when Pokemon was in its initial boom and looks bland. Another unpopular opinion is the most recent ultra rares five years and earlier are way way too cheap. Uh, I would agree on this last part. With the, the, the thing that's going to, I think, save modern in terms of the long term, just because there's so much of it and there isn't like a first edition print or anything like that, the chase cards and the reverses, you have to open so much product in order to get these, it's unreal. Like, if, if you go back to base set, if you open a booster box, just a single booster box, you have almost the entire set. You might be missing some of the hollows, um, but even if you open a second box, the odds, you probably have the entire set at that point, a base set. Uh, in these new sets, you're looking, like, with when these cards are like 600 packs to get one of these chase cards or something like that, like, it's just and just an immense amount of product to to get these cards so well they might not seem super rare or anything like that um i think they are they're super rare and they're going to be hard to get and all product goes up in price when it's going to be expensive later in you know 10 years 10 years a 10 year old box is going to be quite expensive and to open those until you find those chase cards is just not going to be a good option like it's it's going to be a bad time um, so I think I have faith in, in modern stuff, uh, in all sealed product and, um, and all these like really hard to pull cards. 
even the reverses themselves, it's going to be tremendously hard on these large sets, especially stuff like Fusion Strike, where it's so damn big. Um, to get a complete set of clean reverses is going to be an absolute nightmare. In 10 or 20, 20 years, it would be, you know, it'd be so bad because people don't take care of them. Uh, they're going to have scratches all over them, and it's going to be like the challenge that is right now where I'm looking for older reverses, and they're all all beat up. Um, yeah, so the MetaZoo thing, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion on E4. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't uh, I don't think outside of, you know, the 2021, 2020 nonsense of TCG collectibles mania, I don't think MetaZoo would have done anywhere close to what it did. Again, disclaimer, if you like MetaZoo and you enjoy it, collect it. Do it. Just think financially not a not a good idea a little bit a uh, little bit forced if you ask me but again that's only my opinion take it uh, as you will niche says buy what you like is the best advice in the hobby if you don't know what you like then impulse pur purchasing will leave you wanting and if you're just looking to make a buck you shouldn't need to ask what to buy to make money if you know what to buy to make money, you shouldn't be trying to flip anyway, and you should just buy what you like. So yeah, buy what you like is is definitely the way to go. Um, and then if you want to, if you if you happen to come across something, if say it's a collection that has stuff in it that you like, um, great way to save on that item that you do like is to sell off those other cards that you don't necessarily want. Um, I don't know why anyone is like would buy and sell Pokemon cards in general if they don't like them, if they don't have, they don't, you know, want to take the time to learn. Uh, so there's better ways to make money. Maybe not in 2021 with the uh, flip dipping uh, to the extreme, but uh, it, that's only going to last so long. And uh, yeah, just uh, if you don't have interest in it, don't do it. It's it's crazy to me. It's uh, it's not a, it's not a viable way. Like flipping Pokemon cards, especially in a normal market, is not a good way to make money. Um, so if you don't like it, you shouldn't be doing it because you're wasting your time. Isanagi says, "I kind of like Logan Paul." So I don't know what is going on with this, <laughs> this part of the thread, but it seems like we're getting off topic here. We got MetaZoo, we got Logan Paul. Um, I'm, maybe this means like Logan Paul in terms of Pokemon related stuff. We'll give you the. Uh, give you that we'll say you kind of like logan paul in regards to pokemon i think it's okay to like logan paul he's done some questionable things um but if you like logan paul just like you like metazoo go to town polytoad 666 says here's a real unpopular opinion the endless stream here we got more <laughs> we get more metazoo the endless stream of metazoo complaining is far more widespread pervasive and annoying than the tiny handful of people shilling for it. In fact, I've literally never seen someone even loosely suggest that MetaZoo has a remote chance of capturing any mean meaningful TCG market share, much less dethroning Pokemon. At worst, I've seen people saying, this might be kind of cool, the art is neat, maybe give it a chance. So, I haven't seen a whole lot of this, but I have seen a lot of people that are uh, trying to stonk it. More so. Uh, the TCG part... No, I don't. Th I don't think I've ever heard somebody say that they really like the TCG, and uh, uh, the only thing I've heard is that it that the game is not very good, the game itself, which is n it's not necessary, but it would definitely help um, the long term or just like the longevity of of the game of the the franchise. But yeah, you, know, you don't uh, doesn't need to be there. You don't need to have. Uh, any mechanics at all it could be just collector cards um the vast majority of people that collect pokemon aren't playing the game i suggest that they do because it's great same with magic the gathering awesome card games uh, and there's all sorts of resources to help you learn and whether you install ptcgo uh, you can play through the tutorial and learn how to play pretty quick if you play either pokemon or magic and you want to play the other the games are extremely similar they both play really well uh, and deck building is awesome in my opinion. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. I've seen a, a little bit of a mix of people that like MetaZoo and people that are stonking MetaZoo. 
I think it's more on the stonking end. Uh, and I've seen almost no people that like play the game. But I'm sure there's some out there that are uh, blowing on each other's cards or whatever the hell that you do in the game. Oh my god. Another... Alright, we got William Coolman says, MetaZoo is better than Gate Ruler. Um, I'm going to disagree just by the fact... I've never played or seen Gate Ruler played, but I've seen some amazing artwork on Gate Ruler that I would say is better than MetaZoo. But that's more my opinion than anything. Uh, give me the uh, crazy anime f flaming monsters uh, and waifus over the, um, what are they, cryptids or whatever. What's your fetish? I take rainbow over full art trainers all day. Sometimes a second more saves confusion. I mean rainbow trainer over full art trainer all day, of course. Okay, so I man, I think the rainbow trainers are my least favorite. Um, the rainbow Pokemon, cool. Uh, I'm still excited when I pull one because uh, just the sheer rarity of it. And chances are if I do pull one from a pack, it's going to be one that I'm missing from my complete set. But um, the rainbow trainers, I think, not a good alternative. And I think even the market shows that where usually the full art trainer ends up being more expensive than the rainbow trainer, even though it's usually the other way around. In terms of the uh, Pokemon, so if you had a full air Pokemon and the rainbow Pokemon, typically the rainbow is going to be more expensive, but not in this case. I think I, I think they're overdoing it. They they needed to uh, extinguish the the rainbows with Sun and Moon. Josh says another unpopular opinion: those who state people belittle their collections have never been belittled. I've not seen one individual talk down on another's and any other collector's collection nor their goals they may disagree with which set is better in their eyes but that is the extent typically those with less value in cards are the individuals spreading the negativity they feel a need to let others know how they think negatively about those with more expensive collections just enjoying a little rebuttal session so i don't know i think i don't see very often um where people are like criticizing others collections at least in terms of on e4 and especially on the e4 discord um, everyone kind of understands you might have people teasing each other but typically there's no it's not like you know meant to be an actual insult or anything like that it's more just you know making fun of someone because they're your friend more than it is attacking them or their collection uh, and typically anyone that in front of other people is going to be little or or make fun of someone's collection for not being worth enough money, um, typically they're going to get called out pretty quick because people lose sight of the fact that you should be collecting not only what you like, but um, I guess to your financial ability and also you know how much you want to spend on it. You might have other things in life, other collections that you want to spend money on, and that's fine. So... Um, you don't need to have trophy cards coming out of your bot in order to be accepted. Um, you should be collecting for you and not others. Um, if you don't like certain stuff, don't collect it. It's kind of it's the same thing as the uh, as what I was saying about the MetaZoo stuff. If you like something, collect it. Um, it doesn't matter if other people acknowledge it or uh, or think it's the best collection. Do it for you. You shouldn't be uh, trying to show off or trying to collect for other people it's your collection do it as you will so i've had many people that are like what you don't even have graded cards and whatever no i well i had graded cards but i cracked them out of the case to put them into the binder because i prefer binder collecting like there's to me and doesn't mean a whole lot to have something in a graded case but to others they might think graded cards are the best if that's what they like go to town Cheris Andrew says, The organization of modern English sets is abysmal. Modern Japanese sets are put together with a coherent and meaningful theme, whereas English throws every random card yet to be printed into a massive set without the slightest bit of thought. So, I got bad news for you. Um, the set lists are pretty much identical. There's some weird things that happen with like the subsets. But for the most part, it's just them slamming two sets together. Collector says box breaks are the Pokemon equivalent of cuckolding, and I'd rather spend money hoarding 
Hidden Fates, Golems, then buy into one. Uh, I agree. Box breaks aren't really my thing. I know a lot of people like it. Um, and if y you have some kind of person that you really like, uh, open your pack for you, give you a shout out and whatever. I, I, I kind of... I kind of get that, but um, I think I think sometimes it gets um, overblown a little bit when you're asking too much of a premium on a box break, and I don't know. It just kind of rubs me the wrong way in terms of um, overcharging or taking advantage of the fact that you know you're going to make money on the broadcast. You're going to make some money. You have you have to make some money on the packs themselves and your time and shipping and everything else, but at the same time usually a bad idea same with like waffle razzle stuff which is just basically the extra bad version of box breaks or breaks in general i guess um i don't know not for me uh, i don't get it usually the people that are partaking in the razzle dazzles uh, also don't have the money to do it but maybe they're uh, related a little bit i don't know or the worst, the worst might be the people that are anti scalper, but then they're okay with like the illegal raffles, which are you know probably even exceeding the scalper prices. It just doesn't seem like it, I guess, if you don't want to do the math to, to find out how much people are actually paying for the the product. But I don't know. I don't know how you solve that. People just have to uh, to learn, I guess. Mish says, "I am." A big, huge fan of regular and full art V cards, but I do not like 99% of most VMAX cards at all, and I think the VMAX mechanic just feels forced. So, I think the whole Gigantamax, Dynamax thing, in general, felt a little bit forced. I kind of wish they just went with more Mega Evolutions, but they didn't. Um, at this point, I'm kind of used to it, so... I think in terms of staying in line with the anime and with the games, the VMAX mechanic is, is good. It's just another version of like a Mega, essentially, except your Pokemon's getting big instead of necessarily changing and getting big. So, yeah, I don't know. Not forced. I think that the VMAX cards are cool. It's a little bit weird and it's a little bit confusing for new people because they think it's, it's a, makes it a little hard to tell the difference between a full art and a, a VMAX, but I guess the VMAX is kind of like a full art anyway. This can't really be a full art version of a VMAX. So I don't know. Caught at point says, XY Mega Full Arts have aged extremely well. I don't know if they have aged extremely well. I kind of like them. Um, they're a mess with the, the text on them and stuff like that, but they're very different. Uh, and I don't know, I'm a fan of things that are extreme and different and when they go in a completely different direction, similar to the e-reader cards, stuff like that. Give me different, give me different art, give me different mechanics all day. Jamba says, Poker Creator and Snap Cards are ugly AF and the only reason people pretend to like them is that they're a flex. Um, maybe... I really like the snap cards. I don't own, and I've never owned any snap cards, but I, I really like them just because I remember playing the games. If you have no atta like no attachment to uh, the original Pokemon Snap, then I can totally understand how you, you think they're ugly and there's like no reason to want them. They are a flex as well. Um, creator, I mean, trophies in general are kind of that. Like, Not that there aren't nice-looking trophies, but for the most part... The reason behind wanting the trophies is because um, they're hard to get. It's rarity over artwork in most cases. Sometimes you might get a little bit of both, but uh, for the large majority of it, the, the desirability is based off the, uh, the rarity of the item. So if you like rare things, it's still Pokemon, so it's cool uh, if you're a Pokemon collector. Um, personally, that's not what I go after. And th that's where I would say that my knowledge is limited the most. Um, just like anyone you meet in the hobby, certain people, depending on what they collect, depending on what they spend their time looking at, uh, will have certain areas of expertise. And it uh, just comes, comes down to that. Collect what you like. Um, and uh, if there's something in a different area that you, you don't want to get to, maybe, maybe you'll want to get into it later. 
but um, do what you like. Don't worry about other people. Um, and and all will be well, I promise. Jamba says, also trophy cards are ugly and boring and not worth the money. So you're, <laughs> I guess it's more of the, more of the same. Um, I mean, it, that's all subjective. Like it's worth the money to somebody that wants something that's the most rare. Uh, but yeah, not, not for everyone. Sini says, I really regret getting into graded cards. If I could trade my graded card collection to raw copies of every card I have graded plus some money, I would totally do it. Uh, I know a certain someone that has done some of this, uh, with success. Um, and that would be Saber. Um, yeah, binder sets, they're just so good. And, uh, you know, some people might start off with raw cards and then get into graded cards later on, or some people might start with graded cards and get into um, not wanting them anymore. But uh, I think someone suggested, I forget who, but someone suggested that uh, you could sell the graded copy or you could buy the raw copy of one card and then sell the graded copy uh, and you could probably get some money back out of it and have the raw card, depending on the grade. If you're just going to go buy near mint copies or something like that, and they're around the same price, you could just crack them out if uh, if you'd rather have it in a binder with some other cards. Uh, but at the same time, if you have like PSA 9s and 10s and stuff like that, and you want a near mint copy for a binder, um, you're probably better off. You can probably trade for a lower grade, or you can sell it and buy a buy a raw copy or a lower grade and crack it out your binder uh, which I think we'll probably see a lot of in the uh, maybe near to semi distant future uh, with all these cards being graded that probably shouldn't have been all right last one we have Quachancy again who says you are not special or enlightened for preferring Japanese promos to English set cards or having your grail be a trophy card instead of a first edition base Charizard I would agree 100% this almost reminds me of when people have a preference for subtitles or or dubbed anime i feel like this is the the same thing it's sort of that like there's probably most people don't actually care if somebody likes something else other than them but there's still like a select few that are going to um, say like oh you collect english set cards like what's wrong with you those suck um but again if you grew up with english set cards or you like English set cards, collect those. It's, uh, it's as easy as that. Don't listen to other people. Um, you know what you like, and you shouldn't be collecting anything for anyone else. It's your collection. Remember that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Join the Discord, and I'll see you next time.